Let us have no doubt this fantasy about there being a god has its origins in nothing but the mind's limitation. Knowing not to whom or what all the universe about us is to be attributed, hopeless before the utter impossibility of explaining the inscrutable mysteries of nature, above her we have gratuitously installed a being invested with the power of producing all the effects of whose causes we are profoundly ignorant. This abominable ghost was no sooner envisaged as the author of nature than he had also to be deemed that of good and evil. The habit of regarding these opinions as true and the obvious usefulness of suppositions which conveniently flatter laziness and curiosity quickly made for the tendency most men still have of according the same degree of belief to a fable as to a geometrical proof. And the persuasion became so great the habit so binding that from the outset one had need of all one's rational faculty to keep from tumbling into error. There is but a single easy step from the extravagance of acknowledging the existence of a god to the practice of worshipping him. Nothing simpler than imploring the protection of what one dreads, nothing but what is most natural in the procedure which leads to burning incense upon the altars of the magical individual they posit as simultaneously the prime mover and the dispenser of everything that is. He was thought wicked because some very disagreeable effects resulted from the necessary workings of nature's laws. To appease him, victims were needed, whence fasting, macerations, penances, and every other sort of idiocy, the fruit of the fear of the many and the brazen imposture of the few or, if you prefer, the perennial, unaltering effects of man's weakness. For you may be certain that wherever you find human frailty, you also come upon gods whelped by the same man's terror, and homages rendered unto these gods, the inevitable result of the folly that erects them. There is no question of it, my dear friend. This opinion which holds that a god exists, and that he is the omnipotent force responsible for plenty and dearth, is at the base of all the world's religions. But which of these multifarious traditions is one to prefer? Each claims revelations which argue in its favor. Each makes mention of texts, sacred books inspired by its divinity. Each aims at nothing short of eclipsing all the others. Here I find I have a difficult choice to make. For guide in the night I have none but my reason, and directly I bring up its light to help me in the task of examining all of these competing aspirants to my belief, all these fables, I see no more than a heap of far-fetched incongruities and platitudes which chill and repulse me.